welcome back to Concilium Watch. I am Nathan, and today we've got a guest here to talk about Toha. Austin and I always want to present the best possible content for you all, so we asked one of our local Toha experts, Andrew, to help us out with this one. I hope you all enjoy his insight, and thanks for watching. Hello, and welcome to Concilium Watch. My name is Andrew probably better known as DPA, and I'm here today to instruct you in the ways of assembling your force in Toha. Uh, as a reminder, as always, we will be going over the following items, uh, your choice of core fire teams, your choice of specialists, high burst weaponry, defensive pieces or troopers, uh, and reliable sources of orders. As always, these lists will be posted in the description below. And wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's a core fire team? What is this? <laughs> the first thing you'll immediately notice when opening up uh, the Toha faction in army is that you do not get access to any kind of core fire team. This is not a bug, it is a feature. Toha as a species are infinitely gregarious, uh, easily forming both social and military units, usually in groups of three. That is why they have unlimited Harris fire teams and a couple of duos too for uh, the, the stranger ones in the lot. Uh, as you can see, almost anything can uh, make fire teams with almost anything, um, with the very few exceptions of the Reeks Escorts fire teams, which you may notice that uh, they uh, are not in the list here, and these Choxa fire teams, which are not in the large list here. As always, the max is three because that's the maximum size of your triad fire team. All right, so let's get into it. Uh, the first force I'm going to be assembling for you today is sort of your typical, uh, there's a mission where there are some objectives wherein I would need some specialist operatives to either be in the right place or activate the right consoles or take data off of a server, something like that. Um, so the first thing we'll be looking at are some specialist options. The Line Trooper option for Toa is the Kamil, extremely reliable uh, insofar as uh, you get what you pay for. It's cheap, it has a basic stat line, nothing really too fancy here. Many other factions have more impressive line infantry. Uh, if you want line infantry, Toa is not where you go for that. <laughs> However, uh, you can just have uh, 15 line infantry all in fire teams and play it like that. Uh, would I recommend this? No. Uh, the Sock Heel is your upgrade to this. This is sort of your medium-ish infantry, though it is a light infantry class. Uh, you'll notice that because of the transmutation skill, you effectively have two wounds on your profile. One uh, before transmutation and one after. And Sock Heels have much, much spicier things on the menu here. So I'm going to start with picking up a Sock Heel. Um, I'm going to pick up a paramedic here. Um, paramedics are... I mean, between that and a Ford Observer, you can see that they have the same kit with the exception of D-charges and the Flash Pulse. However, paramedics are able to support your own troops by picking them up when they're down, as opposed to uh, tagging enemy troops uh, with uh, their flashlights for the Ford Observer. Honestly, either one will do here. I'm just going to grab that for the moment. After that, uh, we want to look at the other bread and butter unit of the Toa, and that is the Makul. Listed here under support troops, uh, it is a warband that, like many other warbands, um, is impetuous which will not matter when you're in a fire team, uh, and has sort of a template weapon, a uh, sort of mid-rangey weapon, uh, or, you know, not a low burst option, and then grenades. Toha have by far the best warband grenades in the game in that they are eclipse grenades. Nothing can see through eclipse. It is essentially a zero visibility zone. Uh, do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Your MSV is no good here. Uh, it is... Without exaggeration, that I say that uh, Makul are the glue that hold Toha together. Um, and I'm going to take, mm, let's start with a couple. We may go back more. Um, you'll notice that these two profiles here, the cheapest ones, are ones I'm going to pretty much click automatically. Uh, you re really well can uh, experiment with the boarding shock and the combi rifle. However, because of the sort of sacrificial nature of warbands, um, investing more points into them is not always worth it. You're not going to get much mileage out of a combi rifle, even if you are getting plus one burst. There are much, much better options to take here if you want that. So, you know what, I'm going to take a third muckle. Um, let's go on to how do we get these... Uh, let's go for more specialist, actually. Um, because one specialist I want to highlight 
in particular, and that is, if you look here in uh, Veteran Troops, there's some kind of light infantry uh, range here, the Sukiol Commando. Uh, the Sukiol is, uh, as you can see, much, much beefier than a Sakiel. Not only does it have uh, greatly improved ballistics and um, armor, or BTS, uh, it also has a ton of extra rules. Veteran, Mimetism, Stealth, Terrain. Uh, it's still got the two wounds on the profile, but it's just a much, much better unit. Look at all this equipment it has. Pistols, uh, D-charges, uh, deploy over repeaters, uh, strange esoteric sniper rifles. These guys are boss. And in this one, I'm actually taking two. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be picking up, first of all, this lieutenant option. Special lieutenants are fun in that you get to take a lieutenant slot in your 15 troopers and not feel bad about having a lieutenant that might do nothing. You always get mileage out of the Sukiul commander lieutenant, and look at that, it's got a K1 combi rifle. That's something that many factions would kill for, and this one has an auto lieutenant that's a four observer with D charges. Get out of here. It can do more classifieds. And if you've got a hacker, deploy a repeater. Um, Toha do not have many good hackers, uh, or really hackers at all, but it is there if you need it. Bam. Taking them. The other one I'm grabbing is a Sukiel heavy machine gun, also with D charges. Um, sort of a common pairing in some armies. Toha use it quite well. You never... Uh, don't want to have the ability to do sabotage when it's such such an easy classified to do. The Sukul does not uh, stack up with the premier tippy top uh, gunfighters in other factions. However, the efficiency is to die for. Two wounds, uh, mimetism, unhackable. You can't argue with that. It's 4 4. It makes fire teams with everyone. I'm taking one. Beyond that, uh, we need to look into ways to uh, protect and support our troopers besides just blocking the line of sight of the enemy. And for that, I'm going to scroll back up here to the Kaeltar Specialist. Uh, this is another unit that is taken in almost every Toha force uh, due to their unique rules called Symbiobombs and Symbiomates. Um, these are pieces of equipment that are not used by the Kaeltar themselves, but instead are distributed to different Toha units with the transmutation skill at the beginning of the game. Uh, you have to deploy the unit that you want to give the bomb or mate to on the field, and then deploy the Kaeltar, and they will have that on them. You can split them up, you can divide them evenly, however, each uh, trooper can have no more than one bomb and no more than one mate. What are bombs and mates? Bombs are offensive weapons. They are sort of like hacking attacks, in that they don't need line of sight, uh, line of fire, uh, and they can affect anything within your zone of control. They're one-time use that give you access to, if I'll scroll down here, Symbio Bomb, here we go. End game, uh, does wounds, because it, uh, it, it uh, has no other special things on here. Eraser, uh, gives state isolated. Uh, that means that uh, the opposing uh, trooper cannot uh, <laughs> uh, spend orders, and uh, they, uh, if they're a lieutenant, they go to the lost lieutenant. It's great. Uh, it stops enemies coming at you in their tracks. Look at that. It's double action. Take two saves. Last one, uh, Mirror Ball. It lays down a uh, circular zone of control template uh, that is reflective, which means, just like Eclipse Smoke, uh, multispectrovisors can't see through it. So... It's kind of your second option for blocking line of sight and allowing you to go to parts of the board that your enemy may otherwise have 10 million guns pointed at. It doesn't matter if they can't see you. So it's very good when you have models that otherwise don't have much in the way of close range defense, like Sukiol's. You can see they don't have template weapons. They don't have um, any uh, kind of, they don't really have great uh, CC either. But if you're able to make a reaction with a symbio bomb before the opposing, you know, five point Galwegian Highlander comes close, then you can probably stop them in their tracks. So KLTARs, good. What's this? Chain of command for 21 points. That's amazing. That's wonderful. I want five of these. Unfortunately, you only get two. <laughs> So if you have a lieutenant like the Sukiel Fort Observer who is going to be upfield and in harm's way, it's always going to take chain of command. I am going to grab two. And hey, look at that. They're specialists. That's adding more specialists to your force while also uh, synergizing with what you already have here. They're great. Um, now, as always, when you have one of something, that's usually not quite good enough in Infinity. Uh, you know that you can always 
be crit and fail two saves in a row. You know that you can always uh, get snuck up on by some unit that came out of hidden deployment. You know that uh, you might just uh, run out of orders and not know what to do, or you're stuck in some bad situation, or there's ten guys with suppressive fire looking at you. That's why you need a backup. Uh, your backup high burst weapon, uh, there are quite a few. The one that I'm going to choose for this one is, if I can find it, the Gout Rail. Gout Rails are uh, another gunfighter unit. Uh, their largest trait is their bonus switch visor level 2, which means that they ignore uh, any kind of mimetism. This is like chocolate and peanut butter with the Sucule HMG, because the units that the Sucule struggles with are those that have high mods. Um, the units that the Gout Rail struggles with are units with High ballistic skill. So you send the Sucule after opposing uh, MS. Uh, you send the Sucule. What do you say? You send the Sucule after after you know the the kind of crappy whatever kind of units, and you send the that Gal Rail to root out the stubborn units that are giving you some trouble. So the Spitfire. It's quite expensive um, uh, in SWC and in points. However. You don't really have a lot to spend SWC on Toha, besides your main uh, fighters. Toha do not have many uh, SWC taxes baked into their units. Uh, you'll find that most of their units are kind of um, very, very trimly made, with only a couple exceptions that have kind of extra stuff on them, and they usually don't charge you SWC for them. So we're going to happily pay 1.5 SWC of that bad boy. It's two wounds. You're going to get a mulligan. You know you're going to fail a face-to-face, -face, uh, but you're going to get right back up and keep on shooting. After that, um, and I'll, I'll, I'm going to rearrange the, the, the force here to kind of reflect how this sh should be used uh, in general play. Um, but I'm going to pick up another support unit here. This one is not a specialist. However, uh, it serves a number of functions. Where is it? This is a Tagma Schemer. Uh, call it a headquarters troop because in... Uh, a different faction, they can uh, serve in kind of a leadership role. The Tacma Schemer is uh, a Hollow Mask unit. Hollow Mask means that it can start the game uh, impersonating a... Well, not impersonating, that's actually a special role. <laughs> it can spend the game pretending to be a different model. Uh, this often means that your opponent will look and see that, oh, this guy has... Uh, two HMGs, or he has two uh, Fordham servers that are probably his lieutenant, or he has two Spitfires, or he has some other scary unit that they don't want to interact with, um, such as I will be detailing later in the video here. Um, the other big benefit is counterintelligence. Whenever you have a mission where you might need to get a foothold on the board very early, push some buttons, grab some stuff, get a supply box, counterintelligence is like taking two orders on one unit. And for 16 points, that is great. Um, in addition, it also has a pretty good gun, Breaker Combi Rifle, for its points, and it has a, a template weapon, also very good for its points. Um, any kind of template means that you can trade without uh, having to beat them in a face-to-face -face roll on reactive turn. And because everything is in a Harris, it's burst two. That's great. Make two saves. You know they're going to pass one. They'll fail the second one. 100% of the time, guaranteed. If they don't, uh, you can ask me for a refund for this video. Oh, wait, it's free. You can't. <laughs> so we're taking a tagma. Um, after that, uh, we're going to be looking into kind of our smaller pool. You can see our, our main pool is filled up here. So we don't want to look at units to support. We want to make sure that our enemy is not moving about the board freely. Um, even if they have uh, powerful units to take out our overwatching or defensive troopers, we still want to make sure that they have to spend something on it. Um, so what I'm going to do here is look at our very options. We saw that we had a sniper of the Gal Rail. However, there's one more sniper that is even juicier. Do, do, do. Where are you? Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Keep waiting for it. Keep waiting. Where the heck is it? Keltar Igao, Kotail. Nikul! Um, if you're wondering how to pronounce Toha names, by the way, it's exactly like you would pronounce vowels in Spanish. You enunciate all of them, and they have exactly one value. So, Nikul, uh, Makaul, Sakiel, uh, Keltar. Uh, if you have a double vowel, you drag it out. Uh, I don't want to hear anyone who has watched the video go around calling these things McCalls anymore. That makes me cry on the inside and on the outside. I will judge you on the inside, but but trust me. Um, <laughs> the Nicole Ambush Unit. Look at this beast. Two wounds due to transmutation. Sapper. You never get out of cover. MSV-1. Uh, it's hitting uh, anything naturally with minor rheumatism. It can see through smoke at a penalty. You're not going to uh, be able to just kind of walk all over it. And, most importantly, Viral Sniper Rifle. That's right, Viral Sniper Rifle, baby. It's great. Uh, no one likes being hit with anything that 
takes two saves. No one likes to be hit anything that uh, affects BTS unless you're named uh, an Asawira, and <laughs> no one likes taking anything that can send them straight to dead. Um, so if your enemy is trying to kind of kind of kind of cheat with like, oh, I'm gonna use this uh, Red Fury motorcycle as my high burst weapon. Uh, you're going to play Nicole, and they're going to regret their life choices, because <laughs> they cannot get away with that on your watch. Um, after that, I'm going to take a couple more units to kind of uh, be support. Um, these are, namely, the Choxa Auxiliar. Um, oh, look, it's already telling us what we can't afford. How convenient of it. Uh, the Choxa Auxiliar is sort of your replacement for the remotes that are in many factions. Uh, you can see that their stat line is not super impressive. Uh, they have some things going for them. They can kind of rumble, but um, sensor and heavy flamethrower means that uh, you have a reliable tool to root out enemy camouflage that might be either close to your deployment zone or right in the midfield where you're going to be trying to push those buttons. Um, there's nothing more frustrating than having to um, make several discovery checks or if a enemy trooper is on top of a building, you can't even uh, get at them to do discover and try and prevent them from surprise attacking you. The Choxa prevents this. Um, it also trades up very freely. Uh, no one wants to be hit with a damage uh, 15 flamethrower, and um, it's extremely efficient for its point cost. So it kind of falls into that um, reliable, cheap orders function as well. And we're going to put that in the small pool. And after that, we are going to grab his best buddy in the world, if I can find it. Do, do, do. Uh, the Cowrie Sentinel <laughs> Garrison Troops. It's definitely not going to be going far from your garrison. Uh, the Cowrie is a unit custom built to defend you against enemy impersonators um, or superior infiltrators. Uh, with the biometric visor, MSV1, Discover plus three, and six cents. Um, anything that you... Any faction that you know for sure they're going to be bringing something uh, right outside the deployment zone, you want to have a cowrie, possibly as your reserve unit. They actually make great reserve units for that case, because uh, the enemy usually does not expect you to uh, use your reserve unit kind of slot on a, on a weak 12-point model. However, this weak 12-point model can just sit in front of whatever stupid camo or impersonation marker they have, and it can make a bunch of discover checks, it can lay down mines, it can lay down templates, two templates on the active turn, and it can shoot with some submachine guns to threaten some shock, or again on the active turn, discover, shoot, get them out. Taking one. Beyond that, I'm going to go for one more kind of roadblocky sort of unit here to round off uh, this, and that is going to be the... Uh, the Toha Diplomatic Delegate. Um, the Diplomatic Delegate is kind of one of those special... Could be HVT, could be uh, Journalist, but in this case it has one very special profile uh, that has Specialist Operative, Nanopulsor, and Permanent Ferro Tactics Eraser. Unlike the Symbio Bomb, which is a one-time use of a symbio uh, bomb weapon, Ferro Tactics gives you unlimited uses. So anything that activates and walks into the zone of control of a Divmind Delegate is going to be faced with uh, I Eraser You. I should point out, and I think I didn't, and maybe uh, I should edit this back into the early one, but Ferro Tactics only work on models that have wounds, not structure. Um, so remotes and uh, various uh, combined army uh, androids do not care about them. However, everything else in the game, including things that uh, kind of look robotic but have wounds for some reason, uh, do care. So, great stalling tactic. It's um, an excellent means to hold down a corner, even if you can't see all of it uh, due to, however, some uh, over-enthusiastic uh, tournament organizer set up the terrain. Uh, you can put it on top of a building uh, prone, and suddenly they have this like wide swath of corner where your opponent is either going to have to ignore it entirely or move, reset to try and oppose it, because it is a um, technical weapon, or uh, they can uh, just take some saves and possibly get isolated and lose at the game. Bam, we're taking one. All right, so... We've got a couple orders here in the small pool. It would really suck if we had no one to use them on. Um, so I'm going to take one more unit here, and we see we have 273, 5.5 S2C. I said we had not much to spend S2C on, and look at that. We only have one, two, three big expenditures, a couple small ones here. Half an, FDC, half an SWC of Jada Command is disgusting, and <laughs> no one's going to tell you otherwise. Um, but 
Uh, I'm going to put one more specialist on the board. That is our Infiltrator, the Clipsos. The Clipsos uh, is uh, one of your classic hidden deployment infiltration minus six. However, where some uh, factions would start this at around 30 plus points, the Clipsos is a mere 25. Why is it 25? It sucks. <laughs> BS of 11, you know, it's got no armor. It's got some BTS, which is nice. Um, Fizz only 12. Some some factions, you know, they're rocking up there with uh, friggin' uh, high CC or a bunch of uh, special bombs or decharges or, or hackers or whatnot. This is a Ford Observer. It's got nothing special going for it, but it pushes buttons and it lays mines. Those are the two most important things that you need to do to accomplish special objectives and prevent the enemy from doing so freely. Um, it's not going to win many face-to-faces. You could be tempted to put in a suppressive fire uh, as a last ditch, but trust me when I say the Clipsos does its job best when it sees no enemies whatsoever during the game. Bam, I'm taking one. And look at that, we're 298 out of 300. Um, so, as we said, Toha get unlimited triads. Um, so we are going to kind of arrange this into how I would set up my triads to give a better indication of what we're doing here. So let's see. So first off, our machine gun is going to be our point man. Then we'll give, give them a Ma Cool. Uh, because having the option to throw down a smoke grenade, uh, an eclipse smoke grenade at that, or two even if you want to uh, get risky and stack them in two places and hope that you don't fail one of them uh, that you really need, um, is very good. It means that the HMG can do things like get to corners that it otherwise couldn't while staying in cover. It can um, bridge some gaps that might be too big. It can try and flank units, all those kind of things. And look at that right there. We're going to give it the paramedic. Uh, ah, are we going to give the paramedic? Um, no, nah, we're going to give him chain command. Um, that's our specialist. So the HMG will probably stay back, you know, kind of that, that kind of first third of the board for most of the game. But when it does move up, we do want it to have a specialist that can uh, accomplish mission objectives and not have to uh, run back for one. Though, an important fact, uh, because Toha are able to make fire teams with almost anything. You can reform fire teams on the fly. If say half a fire team is left somewhere, you bring another fire team up. You can spin the command you can, you know, break your fire teams, spin a command to open, you know, make a new one and and kind of pick up a unit that you need and put it into uh, alongside a couple of uh, fresh sort of units here. Uh, beyond that, we're gonna go Gal Rail. That is our secondary high burst weapon. Uh, we're going to hope to put that opposed to the units that the Sukil is not good at, and or just use it as another option. Uh, we're going to give it a mock hole, and we're going to give this from the paramedic. So, because the Galrail is going to go further up the board because it has a Spitfire, we think that it'll probably take more wounds than the Sukil will, so I'm going to give that the paramedic. Um, as well, you can see that the Sakiel has these EM grenades. Um, not like the highest uh, physique in the world to use them, but. Uh, It'll definitely make an opponent uh, running at you with a heavy infantry team think twice about uh, rounding the quarter and just firing willy-nilly into your sock heel. And sometimes just having them take extra steps to avoid uh, catastrophe is the best way to go about doing things. After that, uh, we're going to have the Ford Observer here. It is your lieutenant. Um, it will be the head man of this fire team. However, we are mostly going to be uh, kind of sneaking around and not engaging in too many fights uh, until we are really sure that we are good to go. Um, the extra lieutenant order... Uh, used to uh, accomplish mission objectives can be invaluable um, and or uh, accomplish classifieds. Uh, the Sukiyo Lieutenant can do many, many of those because it is a veteran troop. Um, and you're not going to have to worry about getting uh, jammed, isolated, hacked, whatever on the way. And you still got two wounds. It's amazing. Now, you can either put the Tagma in here and um, just kind of give an extra kind of fighting unit and you can have this impersonate something uh, or hollow mask as something <laughs> and uh kind of give it one more kind of throwaway trooper which because this fire team might be breaking up anyways um to allow you to use the lieutenant order on subsequent turns um uh that's not a bad deal you could put the kale in there having a chain of command right next to your lieutenant not always a good plan however tell i just get such cheap chain of command that sometimes it's no no big deal you can just th throw your chain of command up the field however um i would tend to put the kale tar somewhere you know kind of back you know if it might need to join a unit you know let's say unfortunately someone gets the better of your sukul you can always have that kale tar join your mock queen other kale tar or say your gal rail goes uh, down you can have them join in um that's sort of this very chunky uh 10 block of units that can all make harris fire teams with each other 
And as well, you can make duo teams if you just want to use that for order efficiency after things have gone to hell in a basket. The small pool I'm leaving exactly as it is. Um, the Clipsos is going to be used in the majority of the orders. However, uh, it does give you a nice three orders if you need to um, do something, uh, assuming you've hidden deployed the Clipsos, which you should, um, unless you have very, very good reason not to. One order is not worth um, revealing your hidden deployment uh, model ahead of time. Um, uh, you have you have three orders here to do things like root out uh, enemies that have gotten a logic list to your zone. You know, if you have uh, three uh, U.S. Air and a grunts, you can very easily use the chocks to take out one of them, use the cowry to take out a third one, and then maybe you do some shenanigans with the, the Nikul. Um, oh, did I mention the Nikul on mine layer? I probably didn't. Uh, another good way to make sure that uh, you don't get wrecked by uh, that speculative killer, or at least you trade. Uh, sometimes trading is all that you can do. So we are going to save this list. Um, I'm just going to save it as generic. I already have one version of this saved. Uh, save it locally, and we're going to go on to the next one. That because that probably took a little more time than you thought was going to go into a list. But however, I've given you so much tactical advice. I hope that you don't mind. I'm going to load up the next one. So that was our sort of specialist uh, sort of list. Now we get to what most people like to do in the game: kill things. Um, we're going to go back to our faction here, and what are we what are we going to do for killing things? Um, killing things, you know, you need to uh, have your gun at the right place at the right time and avoid the enemy guns. So we are going to be using um, some of the same tools that we had before, um, as well as some new ones. Um, I'm going to start out by highlighting uh, one unit that, if you have played Toa before, is extremely popular. And that is the Takuul Officer. Uh, do not be uh, too dazzled by all these profiles. They are just uh, different ways of doing combinations of weapon and skill. So they had to make nine of them, but ultimately it's kind of just three weapons and then whatever kind of special skill you want to give, either lieutenant or uh, chain of command. Um, the Takiol, uh has, you know, uh, same, not not end of the world uh, ballista skill or anything like, or like, but you know, decent armor, decent BTS, decent willpower. Um, regeneration comes in handy sometimes, but the important thing, it's got two wounds and it has this wonderful skill called Pharaoh Tactics. Uh, it has access to both end game and mirror ball, so it cannot isolate, but it could do wounds to anything uh, that gets to the zone of control or that it gets to the zone of control of. So it can kill things on top of buildings, and that is amazing, and you will quickly learn why people hate the Takiol if you use it. It also allows you to uh, take a sort of a short-range weapon and get up the board, because you could just drop a mirror ball out of your line of fire uh, and um, make your passage clear. You have to make a willpower check, just like any other technical weapon. However, it is it is excellent when it goes off. So we're going to be taking the Lieutenant Plus One Order option, and I'm going to get a little cheeky here, and we're going to take the Viral Combi Rifle. Um, take the Spitfire, can be quite good, and... Um, it sort of ensures that you're not going to get outranged at mid-range. However, Viral Combi is a delight, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. So, with that, uh, as I said, we're not taking a sort of uh, a long range weapon here. So we need something else to hit things at longer ranges and just make sure that we don't need to spend a lot of our orders when they have, like, a war core or some uh, BS looking at us you know, from 35 inches, and our, our Spitfire is very sad. Our Conbref is even sadder. Um, so, what do you want to do with plus one order? Oh, you want to have an NCO for that, right? Because <laughs> you can't spend the lieutenant order in a fire team, uh, but you can spend it when you are an NCO. So, Toha have exactly one NCO. I'm sure I passed them just now. Do, 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 Where is it? Okay. This veteran troop, the Actros. Uh, the Actros is one of uh, the few true heavy infantry in Toha. And as such, it has two wounds on its first primary profile and a third wound on its, on its second profile. This thing is rocking three wounds. You know how many how bad your dice can be with an Actros and you can still keep on kicking? If you hate your dice, you take this guy. <laughs> uh, heavy machine gun, Pulsar. It is much better at defending itself in close range than something like a Sukiel or a Gal Rail, um, which is very good when you need to continuously trade with your opponent and make sure that you're not falling behind on points. Um, I take this. Uh, there are other options here, but they do not synergize as well with the plus one order Takiol. 
Um, after that, we're going to put these guys into some fire teams to make sure that they can make it up the board and do some work. Um, so we are going to once again add in some of our troops that uh, support and do such things. A um, couple of Makuls. How many Makuls do I have? I have several Makuls in here. Bam. Hey, man, there's there's never such thing as too many Makuls. Uh, I guess seven would be too many. But other than that, uh, it is quite uh, easy for Makuls to see good value. And then I am going to take a couple of Kaeltars. Um, these units, uh, while the Takiol does have its Ferrari tactics, the Ektra still could use some. So we are going to assign them, uh, give them access to a couple of other Kaeltars. And I'm going to kind of assume that you might be playing Decapitation uh, for this, so you might not need Chain of Command. Um, you can always upgrade for six points, no big deal. Bam! One bomb, one mate. Um, there is this two simulate option. It is rather expensive for what you get for it. Um, and as you can see, you can get twice as many Kaeltars at the cost of one of these. Um, there are definitely certain ways to build your force such that it is useful, but... Um, Honestly, I love Simu Bombs so much that uh, I don't really feel the need to take uh, two mates most of the time. I mean, you could take four mates, uh, <laughs> but uh, you need a lot of Simu Tomber because you, need, you can only put one on each. So that quickly becomes very expensive. Not that Toa, I don't have cheap troopers to uh, make up for expensive troopers. Case in point, bam, Tagma. Uh, again... Counterintelligence, very good. And you get to disguise who you true lieutenant is when you are going second or you know going first with some other various things. Now, we need another way to uh, run at the enemy and kill them without spending too many of our troopers and points. While it is very tempting to always run big triads up into the opponent, that usually means that you are giving them at least 50 to uh, 75 points worth of models all in one spot, where if they just move one of their units uh, of troopers to get, they can get all of them all at once. So uh, putting everything in Harris and moving everything in Harris has downsides in that if you're not dominant, uh, it can be kind of uh, like handing them a pinata to play with. However, there are many units that can uh, send many models of the board uh, without having many points on the board. Case in point, we are going to go with the Karel. The Karel being here. The Karel Preceptor. Support troop? What, what about this as a support troop? <laughs> this guy is a beast. Uh, look at these guys. Uh, they move 6-4, their, their peripheral moves 6-4, uh, they got super jump, the super of super jump, uh, dodge plus 3, 2 inches, dogged, uh, that means you're essentially putting 1, 2, 3, and dogged, 4, and dogged, uh, kind of wounds up on the table, uh, all moving at 6-4 very, very quickly. Uh, these cats go fast. Um, I would most often take this option here. Uh, submachine gun is a perfectly fine gun when you're not gonna be engaging the enemy until you get very close. Um, smoke grenades are useful, um, not always reliable with this physique, uh, but they definitely are useful. Um, that's why I tend to like also giving them a symbio bomb to allow them to use the whip 13 to put down a, a mirror ball when they need it. Um, and two certas, I mean, why why settle for less? Uh, they are, they, one one eight point Serta can lay down a Pulsar that hits you know four enemy line troopers or uh, a bunch of this stuff. So love them to death. Uh, look at these guys. Viral's close combat weapon CC twenty two. Hmm, it's pretty good. Uh, you could really kill uh, many many points with this. There is the Mutan option as well. Uh, Mutan is more of a shooty guy here. Uh, it's got two contenders and a Pulsar. It's not as good as CC. Uh, I don't use them too often. Uh, they're also a little more, exp they're uh, quite a bit more expensive. They're almost one and a half times more expensive what they do. you got to really think that you want to make your opponent make such hard choices that you could put those two contenders to use uh, without a face-to-face -face roll. But the K-Rail really does not force uh, the opponent to respect its shooting enough, I think, for that to be the case. They're probably just going to shoot at your Mutan and kill it, and uh, that, that just sucks. So we're taking two Sertas. Feel free to prove me wrong. I'm sure the comment section will be full of Mutan defenders. After that, um, 
We are starting to fill up our pool here. Um, I'm going to grab one more thing that can trade up in points very easily. Um, because Toha have access to the wide range of mercenaries that most base factions have, uh, they have all these different things. They've got Kendrat, they've got Beast Hunters, they've got Diggers, uh, they've got all kinds of stuff here. I tend to rely, uh, or I tend to think that uh, the Krakot is pretty reliable here. Um, the fact that you can get um, either two chain rifles or two submachine guns and uh, grenades or chest mines, you can have a template and uh, a shooting weapon in one package. The opportunity to get something like Super Jump or Climbing Plus and that uh, you start at the board and you get a free order, I think makes them very valuable. Um, you don't have to use them first turn. You can just kind of keep them as kind of this, this ticking time bomb that if the opponent ever ends their turn in mid-ish field when you've got a crack out there suddenly you're running around the corner and you're saying do you want to dodge or shoot <laughs> and uh none of those choices end up well i'm going to give them the chest mines option because i know that i'm gonna have enough points for it um but i think the chain rifle option is very good especially since again grenades kill things on top of buildings don't let your opponent just you know out uh outplay you in that regard all right so moving on to the second pool i am going to grab something else that's kind of spicy uh, this is the Grief Operator. Uh, the Grief, as you can see, is yet again another unit that you don't really need to write home about. BS-11, yeah, whip 13, what, no armor, I mean, MSV-1, Courage Stealth, that's cool, but lots of units have that. However, they have this golden skill that's actually called Impersonation. Hey, I got it right for the first time. Uh, this lets them uh, deploy way, way upfield where you need them to go. Um, in marker state, so they can very easily walk around sort of the first line of defense that your opponent has set up for them and get at sort of the meat of whatever it is you need to kill. Um, in general, for killing missions, the best things to kill are doctors, <laughs> because that means that they can't get their units back up after you have wounded them. And it means that uh, you never have to uh, double tap, quote unquote, for effect, uh, in order to get things totally off the table. Um, they also work very well uh, taking out opposing uh, remotes with flash pulses and mimetism because they ignore it. Um, and a combat rifle is, is a perfectly fine weapon to do so, um, as well as other kind of like little, little small units uh, that uh, might be, uh, might sl otherwise slow down very expensive things in your main pool. So save them the orders, have the grief do it. After that, what I say was important, doctors, uh, where's your combat doctor? <laughs> Uh, the Toha Doctor of Choice is the Kubotail Bioengineer. That's engineer with an... Oh, no, no, they, they spell it differently. Corvus Belly. That's nah, fine. Uh, again, it's it's very stripped down, but it's Whip 14, so you gotta love it. Uh, oh, wait a minute. It's an en Doctor Engineer. Yeah, you get both. Um, unfortunately, Toha don't have many things with structure for you to repair. However, having the D charges in the Engineer skill means that it can do things uh, with classifieds that you otherwise would not be able to do. I say click it, and then this can go uh, into a fire team uh, somewhere on here, um, but I'm going to give it servants instead. Servants mean that you don't need to risk the actual doctor itself, at least for the first couple uh, sort of repairs, and it means that you can cover a wider range of ground um, with the servants. Chox's servants are much like other servants. They're only 4-4, four, four, uh, but they have dodge plus 3, which can be very useful for sort of a move dodge um, play style, and they still take advantage of that mimetism minus 3, and uh, otherwise, they are pretty standard surd things. Um, in this case, they, they, they are a different species. So don't, don't, don't worry too much if they die. It's not actual Toha dying. You can look more into the Toha fluff to find out uh, <laughs> how they tend to treat their uplifted species. But hey, at least it's a loving. After that, uh, we have a couple slots free. I'm going to grab one more unit to sort of um, be in the midfield here alongside with the Krakot and make life difficult for our opponent. And that's going to be the Liberto. Do, do, do. Where are you? Liberto's Freedom Fighters. Bam! Mine layer. Look at that. We've barely spent any SWC. This one SWC from Liberto and the one SWC of the Grief Op is no problem for us. Uh, we can very easily make up the board without having to rely on a bunch of uh, machine guns and Spitfires. Therefore, we can spend our SWC on things which control the board and make life hell. Uh, light shotgun, dogged, for deployment. They dodge if they want to. Uh, these guys are sauce. After that, I'm going to fall back on the classic combo of one Trox Auxiliar and one 
Where are you? Carry Sentinel. Uh, this gives you kind of a spread. Um, it's very tempting to kind of um, get many copies of the same unit. You can see here I've got oh, three McCools, two Kaltars. But I think it's this is important to um, occasionally make sure that you have a couple of different bases covered. Um, Infinity is definitely a game which rewards you for having the exact right tool for the job, and um, especially if you don't have to pay a whole lot for it. And uh, Traxos and Cowries are falling into that territory here. Uh, now, again, we're going to rearrange this to sort of see how we would use it. Um, so we uh, have a slight uh, kerfuffle here in that uh, normally you might want to see nine units that can make Harris and then... Um, just one unit that's sort of the odd man out. Not the case here. If you want, you could replace this Krakot with something that uh, is harassable. Uh, you could take that Sakiel uh, unit that I mentioned before. You could take another Makul. You could look into things like the Kamil. Uh, you can afford... Um, yeah, you actually afford a communal Spitfire for the cost of that Krakot and not even do anything for your um, SWC there, um, or other other very small things. Um, but for right now, I'm just going to say that we'll probably have our NCO be our main point man, give him a Makul, give him a Kaltar, uh, and then we're going to have the Takul, a Makul, and a Kaltar, and or um, we could actually swap the Kaltar somewhere else, uh, but... I'm going to have this free Makul here to use its impetuous and get sort of an extra uh, Eclipse Smoke out of the way at the beginning of the game. Or the beginning of the turn, rather. Um, getting a free order like that can be very good, uh, as long as you don't play into the enemy's hands. Um, and it's also good for um, having sort of something that uh, can do some work without having to bring other people along with it. You can, of course, make a duo with your Tagma if you want to uh, not suffer from that impetuous and just kind of do your own thing. But I think that is good for now. We're gonna save this uh, locally, and I gotta move on to my third list because I am. Uh, this video is going on 42 minutes. Holy Toledo! But don't worry. Again, I'm sure that the wealth of information will more than make up for uh, what you are investing in watching this. This one's going to be a doozy. This one is going to be for area control missions. Uh, you've got to get into a quadrant. You've got to get into a room. You've got to uh, uh, get to a, a narrow band in the middle of the field <laughs> for certain missions. Uh, we're, taking, we're taking zones. So uh, as you probably have figured out, Choha have many things that are kind of chunky. So things can take, uh, take a hit and keep on going. Uh, that is very good when attempting to take and hold ground. Uh, so, why don't we lean into that strength as much as possible, and we're going to take the chunkiest thing in Toha. It should be somewhere around somewhere. Where the heck is it? Oh, here it is. The Gorgos! The Toha's tag! Look at this beautiful creature. BS-14, Fizz-16, uh, Arm-7, BTS-9. Good luck hacking this thing. As well, it has a whopping three wounds on its main profile, and then another one wound on its second profile. Fun facts, that profile counts for this many points no matter what uh, form it's in. So you can go from a whopping S7, and if you get shot down a whole bunch and it, you know, your life sucks, you become an S2 and can kind of yeah, maneuver around the board, hide in small places, you know, sneak around, and you're still uh, capturing a zone for up to 71 points, which is in fact, uh, oh, 71, 74 points, bam! <laughs> uh, you have choices of two chocks of peripherals. Um, this is sort of uh, like the... Um, the Karel, or uh, the one unit I'm not going to be getting to, but I will show you real quick, the Rasail, where you have this peripheral um, that, again, is a Choxa with some kind of heavy weapon um, that is helping you out very much. Uh, as far as the Gorgos goes, uh, you'd still get to the Mimitism, um, but we're going to be taking the Light Shotgun EM Grenade version. Again, EM Grenades are a good option to make your opponent think twice about coming at you, uh, or you can very easily uh, you know, run just your uh, Choxa peripheral around a quarter and do things, or run your Gorgos and your Choxa around a quarter and say, who do you want to shoot at? And they'll never shoot at the Choxa, and they say, okay, I'll EM grenades, and they say, oh, shoot, I didn't know you had EM grenades, can I take that back? And you always let them take it back, because that's good sportsmanship. But ideally, you would say, hey, this guy has a light shotgun EM grenades, and then they'll make the, <laughs> the right or wrong choice the first time. And, uh, honestly, if they don't shoot the Gorgos, the Gorgos will be hitting them with an AP Spitfire, or Pulsar, for that matter. Um... Flamenspear is a wonderful complement to a, any kind of 
Spitfire on a tag, giving it a nice ARO uh, that is a blast, which means that enemies are, can't just like jam their whole fire team up against a corner and look at the Gorgos. They got to keep everyone way back, uh, which is more order uh, inefficiency on the part of your Gorgos friend. Uh, as well, um, the Gorgos has some close combat ability to it and a nice viral CCW. So one more thing that can mean that you might not get locked into combat eternally with pesky, dogged um, warbands. After that, uh, we are going to be building weird things here. Uh, let's pick our lieutenant next. Now that we have something to kind of walk up the field, uh, what are we going to use for lieutenant? I'm going to point out another lieutenant option that uh, is very good. We saw that we had the uh, Suku lieutenant. We saw that we had the Takio lieutenant. Um, there was a Camille lieutenant. Do not underestimate the Camille lieutenant. It is zero SWC. Got to love it. Um, uh, but I'm going to choose the Sakil Lieutenant. The Sakil, uh, what's this? 23 points, uh, two effective wounds, uh, EM grenades, and a viral combi? What the heck? Viral combi? I mean, not even, uh, what's his name? Uh, that one mercenary has viral combi. He's got a stupid viral rifle. Yeah, we've taken this guy. Uh, and we've taken this guy. Because look, you got a lieutenant and a decoy lieutenant. There's no way to tell them apart, and your opponent wants to uh, come at them, Great. Uh, they're pretty cheap, and uh, they can take care of themselves fairly well, and they just punch way, way above their weight class and take out things that they really should not be able to. However, you got to get them to where they need to go, and for that, we need more Makuls. Um, real quick again on the Makul profiles. Uh, there's one with a double action close combat weapon for use in missions where you need to keep your enemies not dead, uh, hopefully unconscious, so you can do uh, various things to their bodies, um, in which case you might want to take the double action. Uh, or uh, I would not mix and match just so you don't forget which one is which, but uh, you definitely can can build around that kind of thing. Otherwise, viral. Uh, we're taking one, two, three. Is that all? I think that's all. I think it's all great. We're taking some Uh One of them is going to end up in another pool, but uh, for now, we're doing this. All right, more building around the Gorgos and our Sakil friends here. Uh, we need a way to take out opposing troopers that might hack our Gorgos. We have one killer hacker in the form of A-list Kison, um, but she's a little squish, a little expensive. She, she carries so much kit with her that uh, kind of risking her in the hacking battle um, is not always the best move here. Look at look at all the stuff she has. Uh, love her to death, but if we really want to just kind of like, you've got a hacker, I want to take it out. That's right, you got an impersonator. <laughs> so uh, your options here are once again, the grief, 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 uh, grief. Or uh, you could take things like the Kyuton Imposter uh, or Jan Star, the better version of the Kyuton Imposter. <laughs> um, given that there are limited options for the Kyuton in regular Toha, um, it's almost always better to take Jan, though if you do really want a combat rifle, uh, this guy is available. He's a little cheaper, a little cheaper. But you know what's even cheaper? Grief. <laughs> the Grief does not really need to worry about having uh, the two transmutation wounds. Its job is to get in there, kill something, and then die horribly. Maybe get you a uh, sabotage on the way. But other than that, uh, hey, that thing that I did keep taking, the Tagma? Yeah, we take another Tagma. Hey, this Tagma can look like another Sakil. So your opponent has no freaking idea which Sakil is the right Sakil. <laughs> um, after that, hey, we are looking for things to make sure that our guys stay alive. What's that? Kaeltars? Yes. This time I am going to, um, yeah, let's take one of each. We're going to take a 15 and a 20. Um, because we're not too afraid of a lieutenant getting up there and getting rumbled, we're just going to take one chain of command to save some points. Uh, the Choxa is a thick girl, and she's a little expensive, so we have to uh, trim wherever we can. Thankfully, Kaltars can just be a 15-point unit with a light shotgun and a flash pulse. Oh, no. How terrible. <laughs> Um, again, and it can harass with everything. Uh, after all this, um, let's see. We're going to be grabbing another Liberto. You might recognize them. Um, there are other units to kind of control the front of the field there um, uh, that are more expensive. Some th stuff like Ida Swanson, or you could do things like, um, where is it? Um, 
take this beast hunter right here. Um, but for the points, uh, the trade-off for the Liberto is almost nothing. So um, trust in the fish. We're also going to have a diplomatic delegate. Um, again, we're not worrying too, too much about our irregular orders here um, in that we probably will not have to fool around with our fire teams as much. And um, uh, area control missions are, don't lend themselves as much to going uh, full Rambo and charging your opponent. They're very much so being precisely where you need to be and no further. Uh, because if you go too far, you expose yourself and or be out of the right zone. Speaking of being in the right zone, uh, there's one sort of unit that can always be in the right zone. Assuming it has a safe place to go. And that is a combat jump unit. So we are going to run here and see the Gau Tarsos. Oh, look at that. It's got two words, just like everything else in Toha. Uh, parachute is combat jump. You can either risk it for the biscuit and land wherever you want, or you can simply walk on the board and say, I'm here, I'm 30 whatever points, uh, this zone is now mine. Uh, one of the great reasons to go second on area control maps is that you can just put a guy on and be sure that you're going to score the points for that zone for the round. Um, any options good here. Um, I'm going to take the cheap one, the boarding shotgun. Um, if we're assuming that we're not going to use the Gautarzos to go in the midfield or backfield and clean up a bunch of opposing units, um, the Border Shock is perfectly fine for defending itself. Um, having that extra wound gives you a lot of ability to just use the template option and uh, just put down a bunch of saves on uh, clumps of opposing units and or uh, use the plus six and uh, just make sure that uh, you are winning that fight. Other than that... What do we have left? 17 points? No, 27 points. Um, what do I have left? Berto, Kertar. Ah, 27 points. Yes, I know what we need. We need a Chaksa. Chaksa, Auxiliar. Bam. And then remember I said that uh, Toa don't have many hackers? Well, I kind of snuck this in. I'm going to take a Camille Hacker. Camille Hacker, once again, you're not relying on this guy to actually uh, do very much, um, given that it is not uh, the most impressive hacker, but you're giving just enough sort of a roadblock to make the enemy have to think twice about just running their killer hacker up, uh, or running their own hacker up and trying to uh, do stuff to your Gorgos here. So um, I like having the option, and um, honestly, it's it's a way to fill in points. This could be... Uh, another Makul, it could be another type of Camille, it could be a Sakil if you trimmed some points to make it a Ford Observer. Um, you could, for example, cut the Sakil and run, you know, two paramedics, stuff like that. The Light Rocket Launcher is also a very cool option for sort of some uh, defense here. But uh, for this, I'm going to show you exactly the right situation for you to just have a random Camille in here. Again, do not try and take out opposing hackers with this guy. You don't need it. <laughs> Just kind of keep him and uh, put him roughly uh, in between the path of opponents and your Gorgos, and you'll do well. So I'm going to move Gautarsus in the main pool, because he might need a couple orders. He will, of course, be taking order when he's off the board, but again, on these missions, we don't care about that much too. Care about that too much. Bleh. Um, we are going to have the Tagma spearhead a unit with the chain of command, Keltar. Again, this thing is not going to be fighting very much, but it can very easily throw one smoke, uh, eclipse smoke grenade, and kind of walk and sort of position itself, you know, around three corners of a building and make sure the opponent has to get at all three corners to uh, take the whole thing out. So very useful there. And then we've got um, this Camille rolling in and this Jaxa. And then we're going to make a small pool with our lieutenant and a, another Kaltar. Look, we're not putting the chain of command with the lieutenant. Oh, no, we are. Pfft, hold on. Where's the other Kaltar? There we go. We keep the chain of command and the uh, the lieutenant separate. And I'm going to give them this bonus mock hole. Uh, that gives us a little bit of uh, smoke power in the small pool. Again, you got three orders that you can either use to advance this team or do stuff with the Liberto or um, just, uh, you know, one order to poke out, one order to throw a clip smoke, one order to get back. It's perfect. Um... You can also, if you really want, you can put the Gautarsos here um, and shove something else in the main pool. Um, uh, or you put the Grief in this pool and use that on the Grief, but it, it really is um, a matter of preference here. Just uh, the fact that you're not going to be down two orders because of the Tagma and uh, that you have um, a very safe lieutenant means that uh, you're, you're probably going to get you know three full turns of all your orders. Um, 
starting from turn one. So don't worry about it too much. Have some fun with it. Uh, the main strength of Toha is that you can do anything you want. So if you take this video and say, oh, I've always got to have three Makuls and two Kael'thars and whatever, uh, that is the wrong approach to take. Uh, so have fun with Toha. Go out there, sneak around, pick your fights where they're favorable for you, and I will see you all at the next Concilium Watch.